you all out there have a moment, right? You're watching your baseball team and, and you go back to whatever positive moment, that charge moment where it was, where things just turned around or a, a flight, something was switched on, whatever it may be, flipped. Or maybe you go back to that moment in the season and you thought, wait, 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 wait. That was when we got our ass kicked. That was when we were truly flatlined. That's when you knew it was going to go to shit, right? Like we we all have those moments throughout. This might be it. I'm just saying Bryce Harper versus the world. Watch out. Watch out. We're back. We're going to hit some locks. We're going to break down what's happening here on this Sunday. Happy Father's Day out there. If you got one or if you are one or if you know one, that's fine. If you're an uncle, if you're a dad dog, we don't discriminate here. Thumbs up, subscribe. That's all we ask in return. I'm going to give you two free months of our Discord. Holy shit. We just smashed again. A two-leg USFL parlay coming through on the Discord. And where were you? You weren't a part of it because you didn't sign up at BetMGM below. 21 or older gambling problem call 1-800-GAMBLER. Let's get with the picks. That's what you're here for. Oh, Cubs. We're actually going here as we got burned on Baltimore the first time around. I would go ahead and suggest you shop this number. No problem here. But the main problem, of course, is going to be for Dean Kremer. There's just not enough working for him. More is going to come out with this line right now on BetMGM, where we are for our locks. As you know, we don't have anything. So this is a lean to the point of the Cubs on the money line. I would shop this. Make sure that you seriously shop this. Jamison Tyone on the Hill. It's not going to be as easy, I think, for Chicago, even still, to get this final game in this series here. Not as difficult as I think it would be made out for Kremer on the Hill on the other side for Baltimore. No problem. Not not as big of a problem. I, I want to say that. Not as big of a problem. 20 to 5, 20 to 6 K to walk rate. Doesn't scare us off from leaning at the very least, the Baltimore Orioles. All right, now we get into some action. Look at this. It's the Colorado Rockies. Just absolutely hammered. Now, the Braves can easily go over this number. No problem. If you're arguing that right now, I, I'm not going to say anything in return. Like, yep, you got it. The Braves, they are insane when they get things rolling, especially just as far as taking advantage of how difficult it is to slow down a run from a pitching standpoint. So what changes? Well, Sunday, you're going to see an off day or two here. Colorado, it's not so much like, oh, my goodness, you have this insane pitching matchup because that just doesn't exist even with Anderson there. But look, I don't think Charlie Morton is either going is going to get rocked either. And he's going to be able to slow down a lot with Colorado. Chase Anderson, it's kind of what you get on the surface, a little bit better version of what guy we just talked about from Baltimore. So I don't think you get slammed as much. We'll see how many guys take the day off. And we go lock up that nine and a half total. All right. We move on. Next game, D.C., Miami, NL East battle right here. This is an underplay. It's an underplay. I think mostly because of the pitching matchup, and we'll start there. Jesus Lazardo is definitely facing a favorable matchup. The 27 to, what, six and a half K to walk rate against a team in Washington that is starting to come around a little more. You do have a couple of guys, mind you, that are very difficult to strike out. But as far as just balancing out what we would expect with a team that will strike out, it should open some things up for Lizardo. Now, the flip side is Patrick Corbin, right? But we've seen and talked about this where the numbers may not reflect four innings, five innings of work, give up three runs. And that's, I think, a lot even to this Marlins team who may not have enough to, as we say, activate the stink in a bad pitcher. Right? It's one thing to go up against Corbin. It's another thing to take advantage of it. This game is difficult to do that. That's why guys don't hit 550 every single year against bad pitching, as bad as pitching can be. Corbin here, it's enough to outlast. And that's, that's ultimately what we were looking at. 
five innings, five innings of work. Cardinals Mets. It's going to be a theme. Is it not? It's going to be a theme at least for now, but let's see what we have here. I'll make you, uh, I think Libertor first off, you've got St. Louis on the road. We've seen some struggle here against this Mets team. The, the Mets are dealing with their own issues. Neither one of these pitchers, Carrasco on the other side, would indicate that going under or, you know, in, in any capacity, full game, NRFI, first five, any of that would be a sound piece of judgment right there. Problem is, both sides, when it comes to at the plate, you're not getting a ton here. I think one team is probably, and it's going to be the Mets, one team is probably going to separate themselves like fourth, fifth inning. You're probably, and look, you're going to get a run sneak past, chalk that up, throw that coin flip up, first three, first four innings, you're going to get a run in there. Where it gets dicey is probably like the fourth or sixth inning where you'll start to see the Mets put some runs up and move away. And we see this stuff comes in spike. But we're talking about nine, ten runs technically under nine and a half. Eight one, seven one, seven two. These are very realistic numbers. Look, five four. If you want to look at an edge there, where you know a team in, in St. Louis is able to provide some bats. I'm just saying that it's not going to be as easy just to walk away with this thing. Under nine and a half is the play. We go to Houston, Cincinnati, with an absolute smash factory. On Houston. What? Yep. Absolute disgusting effort there by Houston. And now with Weaver back, you've got Blanco on the hill for the other side there. And no nothing to scoff at as far as the K rate. He's going to get a couple of strikeouts here. He's got a 13% walk rate. The X batting average is nearly 260. So you look over there and it's kind of like a Spider-Man, you, you mean. You just roll with a hot team right now. Both of these pitchers are going to give up scoring opportunities. Both of these pitchers are going to see guys on the base path probably throughout the first, what, two, maybe even three innings. This thing's going to get ugly and it's at least going to, it's going to net a lot of at-bats. And I, honestly, it's, I don't think it's going to be as large of a gap as what we saw on Saturday, but you better expect the Cincinnati Reds to come out and take advantage of that, probably get through that lineup twice overall fast, first three innings or so. And we expect the same for Houston, but Cincinnati, the hotter team, and clearly seeing the ball better there against better pitching. Angels, Royals, look. You've got, in Kansas City at least, you've got very little, very little. So the problem now becomes, all right, Zach Granke, how much do you believe in this man? How much do you believe in Zach Granke to kind of take over four innings? You give me four innings for Granke and let's, let's see what we got. And I mean like shutdown innings, not no hit perfect innings. I just mean, you know, maybe you give a run up. Tyler Anderson comes in and is going to have an inning. Like Tyler Anderson can hold on. I think we can get three, probably four is the cap there. Innings of no, oh my goodness, type baseball. But he's going to have an inning. And to be fair, I think Granky is as well. I don't know if it's the same inning, but it's going to be one in which both guys begin the process of leaving the baseball game. Probably not at the same time, same inning is what I'm saying, but it's going to happen. The thing, though, is what, I, what I'd like to fall back on is getting there. That's why we roll under nine and a half here is just getting there is going to eat up too much time on this. You'll see we go under nine and a half again, four, three, five, three, some type of result like that if it's close. Otherwise, you know, the pull away is not going to be enough for even the Angels to dominate Granky and put up, you know, 10, 11 runs 
and carry this on their own. Pittsburgh in Milwaukee, right? Thumbs up, subscribe. You haven't already? Come on, come on. BetMGM below, right? You're still going to get what's going on at BetMGM. You know that, right? But you're also going to get two free months of the Discord. And we just smashed an 18-unit night. We've had 30-unit nights. It's just what we're doing. So come on over. Come on out. Come hang out. First two months are free. First two months are free. And all you had to do was sign up at BetMGM. It's crazy, isn't it? Truly crazy. Over eight and a half. Next play, Milwaukee, Pittsburgh. See, I don't make you wait even after the sale, right? Gotcha. Want to make sure that you understand I'm taking care of you. Not trying to force more stuff on you. Well, come on. When you get to the play, I just said, do this. Don't worry. I got you. I told you. You don't have to fret. Pirates, Brewers, over eight and a half. Mm. Okay. How do we get there? Because I could hear you groaning. Freddie Peralta at home. How do we get here? Come on. Where do the runs start pouring in? First off, it's not like Freddie Peralta is Mr. Shutdown. 24 and a half K to about 9% walk rate. X batting average is decent. This is like average stuff right here. Luis Ortiz, on the other hand, well, <laughs> now we found our culprit. Now we found the guy who should be giving up a lot. You'll have to pardon me here as we run through whatever the hell is in my house with my toddler. My goodness. By the way, I found if I, I don't even know if I can say this, but whatever the one of these healthy grocery stores, I found a lemonade version of Orangina, and it is insane. All right. So look, you know me, I'm older. I know I don't look as old because for whatever reason, but inside, you know, I'm dead, old, just old, washed. And if you are in my range, you remember Orangina. And my goodness, what I love about that was it was a very refreshing drink. It didn't fill you up like a soda or anything like that. And I found this lemonade version of Orangina. So I guess it would be Lemongina. <laughs> I don't know what the hell. Man, I'm telling you, you guys get me on him. It's got a little bit more of a tangy aftertaste, though, as you see. Oof. I love it. Rangers under eight and a half. Blue Jays, did we do that? Did we do that? Yeah, we're doing it now. I know. I know. One of these days, I'll show you who I'm talking to. <laughs> Texas Rangers at home. Okay, here we go. Chris Bassett coming to town, swinging through. Now, this game should feature some offense, so you're going to need a decent pitching matchup at the very least. John Gray and Chris Bassett are up to the task. It's going to take some time. Bassett, though, has been able to control uh, X batting average, opposing hitting and situational hitting as well. He's been able to control that. On the road, I understand, a little more difficult, but we look at this here with Texas. It's a pretty favorable matchup if you just look at Bassett versus this lineup, projected lineup at least. Again, we go through this, and depending on what changes you let me know at Shander Show or as I told you on the Discord, remember, so we had those 30-unit days. You didn't believe me, right? Mm. It's a shame, isn't it? Okay. Under eight and a half, two pitchers up to the task. I think so. Going to have a strikeout or two. Look, not easy. Not easy staying below nine runs, but you get a couple of stretches by each one of these pitchers, and that's, again, enough to negate runs, scoring runs, not a team scoring a run. I'm saying going on. Going, going on, on a uh, run. Okay, okay, under seven. Phil's A's. What is going on here? What has happened to us? We've fallen apart. It's Zach Wheeler. It's it's just, it's Zach Wheeler. Zach Wheeler is Adam Sandler and Billy Madison when he catches the dodgeball. Now you're all in very big trouble. Whatever the hell he says. I got so much Paw Patrol in my head. I don't remember my own name half the time. But I do remember. The Oakland A's in what was another tight one in extra innings. Look, they're going out with Hogan's heroes, Hogan's Harris, Hogan Harris. He hasn't been stretched out enough. This is a difficult time to face the Philadelphia Phillies. This guy has the 
Kyle Schwarber leadoff Jack tattooed to his forehead right now in Hogan Harris. It's not going to be great, but but we'll see how long you last. Come in there, bullpen stuff. Wheeler's going to shut him down. 5-1, 6 nothing, 4-2. These are all viable endings in which Philadelphia and Zach Wheeler shut down the Oakland A's. Look, the other part of this is that when the Phillies bats are silent, they are so bad, and we haven't seen it in a little bit, but when they are silent, they are so bad, it doesn't matter who they take on. They're just crumb central city, and it's just a disgusting product to view. Diamondbacks, Guardians, what would you do if I told you that so much of this game, first off, shop the line, shop the line. Oh, man, you got me thinking. Don't worry. <laughs> That's not going to be a thing. Shop the line. Do, 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 do. You know, love isn't always, right? I'm just not going to sing it. I'm just saying, like, oh, man, that would have been a thing of beauty. See, now we have to th come up with a song. YouTube's probably going to flag that if we put it out there. So <sighs> offense, that's what we're looking at here. Offense. Okay? Look, so much of this for this game specifically is Cleveland turning this thing around and starting to put up some runs again. Arizona has bounced back from a difficult series against the Phillies. Now you got on the hill, Tanner Bibby, not the Biebs, the Bibs. The Bibs is the poor man's Biebs. Actually, he's got some better numbers, but that's not for the narrative. Zach Davies, as they say in Philly, Zach Davies. Really, this guy? No, no, no. Neither one of these guys, including and not to be limited to, just so you understand, Tanner Bibby are going to be enough to slow this game down. I think Cleveland is going to wear uh, Davies down. Absolutely wear Davies down. Oh, my goodness. What's going on here? Because we didn't have all the other stuff. I didn't close down the other stuff. It's it's just amazing. You know, truly is amazing. There we go. There we go. Unbelievable, folks. You're lucky I'm quick on the draw, like the horse named McGraw in the cartoon, over nine. Over nine in this game. Again, Cleveland, the main vehicle in this. But I do think Arizona getting to Bibby is highly achievable. Just Cleveland, I think, will be the catalyst in getting us some runs here, taking advantage of just a bad pitcher in Zach Davies overall. We go out west. We stay from the desert to Lala, and that's fine here because Giants-Dodgers – is going to provide some electricity. Reminder to shop. Shop the line. I told you I wasn't going to do that again. Damn it. It was hard. It was just so hard. This is parody written all over it. Come on. This is not even like Weird Al level parody. You and I could do this. Shop the line. Do, 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 do. All right. Enough. I just, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I just, I'm sorry. I don't know why that's so funny to me, but I'm sorry. I know people are, are like, I'm here for a freaking video. You're you just, I can see it in your face right now. All right. This is the play over eight and a half. You don't have to wait for it. I won't keep you waiting for it. We'll look at the pitching matchup as we always do. By the way, San Francisco on the road. Don't count them out right now. All right. Logan Webb, decent numbers where it matters at times with the walk rate, but attackable. The batting average is. He's going to have to pitch to some contact to L.A. L.A. is that murderer's row. Come on. Gonsolin, we know the K's a lack with Gonsolin. We also know that it's been a rough one for him with the walk rate nearly at 10. So 19 to 9.5 just hasn't been great. You've got guys who are not teeing off on him, but there have been some holes here in his pitch to contact. San Fran, you get through this lineup once, second time around, they become a little more dangerous. L.A., it's just so tough in the first inning to get through this type of game here. So we're going to go over eight and a half. All right? Trust me, we're almost out of here. I promise. Don't worry, we'll give you a lean here on Sunday night baseball. But Seattle hosting Chicago. Okay. 
what can we do here? <laughs> what can we do with a team in Seattle, mind you, that has strikeout written all over them? Is there enough for Lance Lynn to step in and take advantage of it? Probably, actually. As crazy as that sounds, probably. You know, as you look at this game deeper and deeper, I do think Chicago on the money line is a little appealing. It's not a bet to place for me, but I do understand why it becomes appealing. The better play here, though, overall, is the under. And while that may sound a little crazy to you, while they may sound a little nuts to you, the under here for both pitchers actually makes the most sense. Bryce Miller right now coming in 22.5 to 4.5K to walk rate. X batting average is below 240. Look, as I mentioned, Lance Lynn, like when he's pitching to a lot of contact, it's not great. But striking guys out, we know that Seattle has some K's in them and then some. This is a pretty good matchup for both pitchers. Both pitchers. And that's why we end under eight and a half. On the way out, we know Sunday night baseball. It's not up yet with a doubleheader. Don't worry. You hit me up. Always hit me up on the Discord. If you're there, please. Shander Show on Twitter. S-H-A-N-D-E-R. That's where you get me there. But if you just look at the doubleheader here, as expected, Bello, for the late game, we've, we've gotten, I don't know if it's trouble, Severino, though, now in full effect. I think this game has an overwritten on it. Sunday Night Baseball, normally those things slow down a little bit, but Bella will be in there a little bit. It's just a matter of how much he gives up before he get, finally gets yanked. So don't mess around with his K props. Severino, you know, on the road in this type of ballpark here, I think the play is the over. I'm going to lean over. I'm going to see you on the Discord. Two free months. That MGM. That's how you do it. Have a great, happy Father's Day. 